That was August 25, 2019. Still only 29 years old at the time Andrew Luck retires from football after seven seasons. And he has been, for the most part, absent from public view. Every once in a while, sidelines at a Stanford game. Right. Every once in a while, you see him somewhere. And it's it's like seeing a hummingbird. Right? He's there. Oh, look. And he's gone. And... And then you wait, and then here comes another hummingbird like a year later. Oh, wait, it's there, and then he's gone. It feels like when I look at some of the things he's had to say after making his first public appearance in Indianapolis since August 25 of 2019 at Chuck Pagano's Chuck Strong Tailgate Gala, he is now ready to be involved in football again. He feels like he has to give back to the sport that gave him so much, even though he retired Still in his prime, still with plenty of years left in his career. You and I and the rest of the NBC crew were at his final game ever played in Kansas City. No one had any idea it was the last we would see of Andrew Luck in the 2018 divisional playoffs. And I think he's going to be back around now. In what form? I don't know. Not as a player, but we're going to see him and hear from him, I think, Chris, more and more moving forward. Friday night was kind of his return to football and reading the words he said and reading between the lines or the tea leaves as the case may be, I got the impression we're going to see a lot more of Captain Andrew Luck. Yeah, hope, hopefully. Dearest Muller, we don't want that to die. We don't. I mean, oh, you know, I, bring I, did, it back. <laughs> I feel like he, uh, he, he was probably a little reluctant to show his face. You know, it was kind of the villain in Indianapolis for the way that he got out of there, right? I mean, they're a team that was kind of in the Super Bowl window and left them high and dry. And I, I think, you know, of course, those fans were a little bit bitter about it for a while, which I understand. They should be, definitely. But hopefully time has passed by. People respect the decision, all of that, and he's in a good place mentally. But, yeah, he was obviously worn out and just couldn't take it anymore. But it's unprecedented what he did. I mean, we have never seen that, not in football, not at that position quarterback in their prime definitely one of the five best quarterbacks in football an incredible start to the career one of those guys that kind of came into the league and was like eh I'm really damn good right away I'm already one of the better ones in the league a little bit like we saw CJ Stroud do this past year uh and then just to yeah year seven see you later I'm out of here it's still shocking it really is uh he had a a really unbelievable quick run uh, as a player by the way, I do have to express my disappointment in the Captain Andrew Luck X account. 441,000 followers and nothing after Friday night. Now, maybe Captain Andrew Luck is busy with other things, off you know, collecting squirrel oil. I don't know. But uh, I would have expected some something that, that Chris could read Seriously. for us this morning from the Captain Andrew Luck account. How, d- how dare you? <laughs> how dare you, Captain Andrew Luck? Okay, um... Boy, I was going to say something. It was going to be a really good point. And I got diverted with the talk. Squirrel oil. Squirrel oil. Yeah. But, you know, I I feel like this is a guy who just understands. I got. I can't remember what it is. I feel like if I keep talking long enough, it'll come back to me. Don't you hate that feeling? Uh, yeah, I did. I had, I had, a had it last really week. Good one freaking time. point to right. make. I had a great point to make. But, uh, well, let's play this sot, and maybe on the back end, I'll remember exactly what the hell it is that I was trying to say. Here's Andrew Luck on if he has ever considered returning and playing professional football since that abrupt retirement in 2019. I think when I retired, that part of it was put to bed in my mind in a, in a very simple sort of direct. Not, there was a lot of complications around it. You know, it certainly tormented inside, you know, and as you guys saw, you know, that night. Um, but I think that part of it has has stayed. And football gave me a lot, a, a lot, a lot. Most importantly, again, the relationships and the experiences with people that I loved, like Chuck. I mean, I think part of me feels, and I and I don't mean this in a cheesy way, but part of me feels like you know it's my turn to give back into this game, and this is what feels right at this moment. I mean, there it is. He's at a microphone for the first time in four and a half years. He's out there talking. It's my turn to give back, and I've remembered now. Oh, I feel so good when I remember something that was just not anywhere in my brain. Because at my age, you start wondering, is this the, is this the start? Is this how it starts? <laughs> is this the beginning? Um, you mentioned that he was kind of a villain for a while. 
you know, I'm still pissed on his behalf that somebody leaked to Shefty during that preseason game that Luck was retiring because he had to walk off the field to a cascade of booze that night. Let the guy walk away on his own terms. Whoever it was that leaked that, F you for doing that to this kid. I mean, seriously, F you for doing that and forcing this kid to walk out and be booed off the field. His last time in Indianapolis, he's booed off the field because somebody vindictively, that's the only explanation for it, vindictively wanted to get it out there during the game that Andrew Luck was retiring. That still pisses me off to this day. And I don't know if he's pissed off about it. He's never said anything about it. But, I I mean, if if you're not pissed off about that, you don't have a pulse. That had to be infuriating. He still has to be thinking about that. Yeah. That he didn't, yeah. you know, he didn't get to, he didn't get, they all want to go on their own terms. And he was going to go on his own terms. And somebody dropped the turd in the punch bowl before he had a chance to do it. And he got booed off the field his last time at Lucas Oil State. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. It, it, that's a tough situation. You know, I know he got booed off the field, but they also, they let him keep all his money that he didn't really necessarily. I don't know about that. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, we don't know how that worked de- out. They came to a deal a little bit. I'm, I'm pretty sure. They certainly didn't ask for any back. He might have not got all that he got. But they were in their right to ask for money back, and they didn't do that. We we do know that. So you know he it's it's hey it's passion about the sport. We know that. I agree with you though. Somebody within the Colts organization who was pissed off about it sent it out and made it public to put some pressure on him, or they were just angry or vindictive or whatever. Definitely, you're right. I mean, it was a weird way to go out, certainly. But uh, you know, it's that was a that was a tough thing by him to do to the organization too. I can't deny that. I mean, they, they invested in him. They thought he was the guy, right? The organization was, wait, we just lost to the Chiefs in the divisional game. We're going to be really good for a lot of years to come. And then he left and, yeah, put their organization in a bad spot and certainly put Frank Reich in a really tough spot who took the job primarily going, wait, I got Andrew Luck. This is great. And he had a deal with a revolving door of quarterback. So that was one of the tougher situations I've seen, that's for sure. To – Apply a minor twist to that great quote from Bo Scarborough a few weeks ago. Football owes me a lot, but I don't owe football anything. It's just a ball. I mean, when you're ready to retire, you retire. If you no longer have the appropriate mindset to go out there, even though it's not like stepping into the mixed martial arts octagon, you still have to have the right state of mind to play football at any level, especially at the highest level. And for whatever reason, if Andrew Luck doesn't want to do it, that should be fine with everyone. He's making the decision. We've used the word conscientious a few times today. How about that? And bad lucky. But but, but, but does it balance out? I don't know. But the fact that he made the conscientious decision that he no longer wanted to play is something that should have been respected at all levels and whoever leaked it knew or should have known what was going to happen it was going to cause a shit storm on a Saturday night during a preseason game it was going to cause a ripple effect through the crowd and there was going to be a reaction to it and I'd love to know who did it I hope whoever did it feels bad about it four and a half years later because that was not the way to respect somebody who is making the conscientious decision that it is no longer for him to play professional football. I, I think where they were bitter, right, if I can take myself back and remembering some of the things I heard from certain, is that, that you know, these feelings were probably there all off season. Why did we wait until we're into preseason game number four for them to come out? And now you've left us in a spot where we can't do anything and we're really stuck with our team and our quarterback. And I remember that hearing some of that from people I knew in the league a little bit. That's where the bitterness, I think, from the Colts came was like, were these thoughts in your mind in March and April? Why didn't you tell us then? You know, why did you wait till you get to camp? And then we started to have conversations why we were kind of like significantly into camp and it went from there. And I think that's where it rubbed people the wrong way in Indianapolis, where they felt like, hey, we've committed to you. We made you the guy. We gave you this big contract. And damn, you couldn't give us a little warning here and not ruin our organization for a few years. I think that's where things got a little contentious. Whoa, look at me. Big word.
Wow. Wow. Yeah. But but l l let me let me take it from the player's perspective. Yeah, sure. I think from the individual's perspective, yeah, any it's, individual it's is going through this angst, this turmoil, this yeah, conflict. Right. What am I going to do? I want to keep playing. But man, I really, uh, you know, I'm constantly in rehab. I'm constantly injured. I've had all these surgeries now and it's only going to get worse. I'm only 29. Should I walk away while yeah. I can still literally walk? And you go through it and you dread it. And what am I going to do? And when am I going to do it? And all these people I'm going to be letting down and you're holding back against the dam as best you can until the dam finally breaks. And my guess would be that there were people in the organization who missed the signs from Andrew Luck. Because what happens is when someone is going through that Am I really, you know, is this right for me? What am I going to do? There will be clues and there will be hints. And if you're paying attention, you will catch them. And so, yes, you could say, well, you know, oh, God, he really screwed the Colts. But, you know, he he was in a human moment, making a human yeah, decision. Yeah, I hear you there. I know. And right. and maybe he did everything he could. I mean, you know, he he he. I'm, I'm trying to hold it together as best I can. I have an obligation to this team. I'm going to go play. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he gets right up against it, and it's like I j my heart just isn't in it. And that would have been the worst possible thing for him to go forward with a football season where his heart's not in it, his mind's not in it, his soul's not in it. That would have been the worst possible outcome for him. And, hey, hey, let's flip it around. Teams cut players all the time. Oh, bought a new house. That's right. Pack it up and no, move. No, I know. Oh, oh, wait. You, 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 you loaned money to the family member who's building a house, and oh, 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 sorry, you're cut now. Oh, oh, you, you have your financial planning, and you uh, have a trust, and you. Oh, sorry, get the hell out of here. That ten million you thought you were going to make this year, bye bye. You're not getting it now. So it, it goes both ways. No, I know. Teams that. disrupt the lives of players all the time. Yep. If one player decides he's going to do the right thing for himself and, God forbid, it disrupts the team, deal with it. Because you do it all the time, not you, Chris. Teams do it all the time to the players. You, they don't like it when the tables get turned on. And that's where you're, you're, you know, whoever got pissed off at him didn't think of it that way. We turn guys' lives upside down all the time. God forbid someone should make our life a little more difficult without us being ready for it. Maybe now you know how the players feel. Maybe be a little more compassionate toward the players instead of just treating them like pieces of a machine. No, I, Man, listen, where'd that come from? I, I, I hear you there. I do. It's a brutal it's a brutal sport, we know, and it's usually brutal on the players. And I'm certainly not one to, to be too mad when it gets you, turned you around. It. You got yeah. it. Yeah. You got it. They didn't pay you. They yeah. didn't pay you in Tampa. And then you don't have a spleen anymore and you can't help them anymore and you're gone. No, I I'm I'm you're exactly right. That's that's I I feel for that always. And and yeah, I think to your point, that's probably what was going through Andrew Luck's head. Like, wait, I I don't know. I'm gonna try to do this. So what's going on? Why is my passion not there? And as you start to get through training camp, you start to realize, wait, it it's not there. It's not coming back. Oh man, uh oh. I really can't do this anymore, and you know it all just came to that pinnacle. And hey, just glad he's happy now. Certainly glad he's happy now. And the Colts, hey, they found a quarterback to replace him. It looks like by all due accounts, and Anthony Richardson, they got back on their feet. Chris Ballard's done a good job there, rebounding, uh, while also them staying pretty relevant through this whole damn thing too, which was pretty impressive by them. I got to give them credit for that. And what's amazing is the current backup to Anthony Richardson, several years older than Andrew Luck even now. I mean, that's the thing. Luck could still come back and play. He's shown no inclination to do it, and I think he stayed away for five years because, like, I don't want to be tempted. Yeah. So I need to have that break so when I do go back around football, it's not going to pull me back in because it's still, he's still young enough to play. He could play another 10 years. Hell, he's got five years of no wear and tear on his body. He could play into his 40s if he wanted to, but I think he's at peace now or he wouldn't be the moth back floating in the vicinity of the football flame. Let's take a break. When we return, earlier we talked about misadventures in social media that may be sending a message from a player to a team. Could another player be inadvertently disclosing his team's draft strategies on social media? We'll discuss that next year on PFT Live. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.